Okay, my name is Evan. I'm here with the last in a series of informational videos on the subject of expungement of old criminal offenses. So as with each video before, have to make sure to note that this should not be construed as legal advice to anybody in the viewing audience. This is being presented as an information supplement to your own research on this subject. So please don't take this as a final word on any of these questions. If you have specific questions for your case, and you want advice or guidance particular to your matter, you should speak with an attorney. This is just information that we find to be generally true after having researched the questions. But if you want guidance on your case, please talk to an attorney. So that having been said, these are some frequently asked questions about the expungement process that didn't get covered in the first four videos. So those videos again are what expungement is, whether you are eligible, uh, then once you determine you're eligible, how to fill out the forms, and then finally, how to get everybody served copies in your paperwork filed. And this is just going to cover some of the miscellaneous stuff that comes up along the way. So if you find yourself in the middle of the other videos saying, uh, hey, wait, I've got a question that didn't get covered, hopefully it's going to be in this. But if you didn't see your question covered in this presentation, let us know. You're probably getting this from the Law Library's website, but if not, kclawlib.org, please visit the site and find our contact information on our homepage. Get in touch with us and let us know what you're, how, what you're interested in finding out. So far and away, the most popular question is how long is this gonna take? So I'd like to circle back to something I said in an earlier video and just remind you that you've already taken the uh, important step to make this corrective action to your, your history. So, you know, keep in mind that this is not gonna be an instant, uh, instant process. You are going to have to wait some time. So the only definite answer that we can offer you here is that it's going to take no less than 15 calendar days. It will very likely take longer. So the reason I say that is the California Penal Code says that when someone petitions to have their old conviction dismissed, it has to give 15 days notice to the prosecuting attorney. So in other words, the district attorney. So you're looking at 15 days from the date that you fill out your paperwork and get it served and filed uh, until your hearing date. And that's if you manage to hit the bullseye and you just so happen to start the process on a day where 15 days later, um, you will have uh, adequate notice to the district attorney, and it happens to be a day where they have the hearings on calendar. So keep in mind that you're looking at 15 calendar days, but remember that when you're setting your hearing date, 15 days is not a bullseye, it is just the bare minimum. So if it works better for your schedule that your hearing is 20 calendar days later, then you're looking at no less than 20 calendar days. So there's no precise answer that we can offer here, except that it will take no less than 15 calendar days. So again, at a minimum, it's no faster than 15 calendar days and realistically it may take longer. So if 15 calendar days from when you start falls on a day where motions are not heard, it's going to take longer for sure. That's about as specific as we can get because remember we can't make any predictions or assessments on any one particular case. Uh, question two, does this cost anything? No. So there used to be a research fee assessed by the probation department. It was $120 for each petition and then each uh, subsequent petition would be 60. But as of January, 2022, this is no longer the case. So in other words, you probably have known people or may know people who have uh, took advantage of this process in the past. They may have mentioned to you that at the end of it, they owed a fee to the probation department uh, for their research preparing for the hearing. So this is no longer the case. It is free to file in the first place and there should be no fee assessed in your case. So if you handle your case personally, you prepare the paperwork, you serve it, you file it, you go and appear on your own behalf, you should not be out any money at the end of this process. So again, does this cost anything? No, not in dollars. It will take time but everything does. So on to the next. I have different cases. How does that work? So cases are identified in the Kern County Superior Court with an individual case number. So when you look up your case information on the Superior Court site, your results are gonna be organized into cases with a unique number. You submit 
one petition per case number. So for example, if you have five counts on your misdemeanor case from Bakersfield, case BM1234567, you can petition to have them all expunged at once using one petition. So again, you're gonna to have to go back to our other videos to evaluate whether all the counts are eligible. Um, basically, if you have you know, multiple counts on a single case, you can use one petition. If you have more than five in a single case, you can use an attachment. And again, go back to one of our earlier videos about how you fill out the forms if you want some more detail. So on the other hand, if you have two cases, so you have like one count from case BM1234567, and you have a single count from BM2345678, you're going to need two separate petitions, two separate orders. You have to go by the case number, and you can't have more than one case number's uh, counts on a single petition. So uh, note that when you're filling out your forms, it, says, it calls for a case number, not case numbers. So you have to uh, just organize it by uh, case number, and however many petitions that will require uh, is going to be subjective to your case. Uh, next question, do I have to go to court for this? Yes. So if you're looking at this presentation, safe bet is you're representing yourself and that is okay. You are entitled to represent yourself, but part of representing yourself in this matter means you need to attend the hearing date that you select. So in that presentation where I really stress that you need to pick a date where you can actually attend, uh, keep in mind, yeah, that it means you really do have to show up. So the Kern County Superior Court right now does not accommodate remote appearances for self-represented parties in these types of petitions. So unless you are represented by an attorney who explicitly tells you, don't go to your hearing, I will appear on your behalf, set aside time in your schedule and be ready to show up to court on the day that you selected for your hearing. So that's why it's a good idea to keep copies of all your paperwork for yourself so that you have that hearing date displayed clearly somewhere that you can access it and that you can arrange to have it free. Big question, will this still show up on my background checks? So if you petition for dismissal and your petition is granted, you will no longer have a conviction on your record for the dismissed count or dismissed counts if there's more than one. So if you look up your case on the Kern County Superior Court website, your case is still going to appear, but now it will show up with dismissed instead of pled guilty, pled nolo contendere, or in other words, no contest, or found guilty. But if you want to further seal the record of your case, you may wish to look into the petition to seal arrest and related records. So this further conceals the details of your case from public view and on background checks having to do with employment. So keep in mind if you're considering that process that it's often used in the shorthand seal and destroy, but bear in mind nothing destroys anyone's record. There's no way that it goes away totally and forever. Even if you petition to seal your arrest, uh, law and enforcement agents and court personnel in certain cases may still be able to access the case file. Uh, but in order to reduce visibility, if you want to go beyond this step and conceal this from public view even further, you may wish to reach out to the law library about the petition to seal your arrest and related records. Big question that follows that, of course, is what's the difference between the petition for dismissal and the petition to seal my arrest, or some people call it seal and destroy. So these petitions are requesting different things. So the petition for dismissal allows you to request that the court dismiss your conviction. It's undoing a conviction, in other words. The petition to seal arrest and related records allows you to request that the court seal the record of the underlying arrest. So. It, it helps to think of it in reverse. So uh, you can have an arrest that doesn't result in a conviction. So once you've undone your conviction, you can still ask to go a step further and go back to, uh, to point A, that is the arrest, and seal that record. So the petition for dismissal is appropriate if you have convictions on your record that you want to address. But some of you watching this may just have an arrest that never resulted in a conviction. 
So the petition for dismissal allows you to change your criminal history if successful, but the petition to seal the arrest and related records is appropriate if you want to make the history of the case less visible to the general public. So nothing can destroy your record entirely, as I mentioned before, but if you want to reduce its visibility, petitions to seal arrest and related records may make sense in your case. As we mentioned in previous videos, though, the point of the petition for dismissal is that at the end of the process, if the petition is granted, you may truthfully, generally tell employers that you are not convicted of the offense that has been dismissed from your record. Again, there are exceptions. If you want to review them, please go back to the video about what is expungement. So that is the end of the presentation. And just want to make sure that you're aware that if you have questions that were not answered here or in any of the preceding videos, you can contact the law library and we can do our best to answer your question. Keep in mind, though, that if you want specific guidance on your particular case, you're going to want to speak with an attorney. So um, if you're interested in knowing the answer to your question about your case, we may not be able to assist with that, but if you're just looking for information about how the processes work generally, if you'd like to explore the subject of the petition to seal arrest and related records, please feel free to reach out to the Kern County Law Library. We are here to help. Uh, and with that, I will sign off and say thank you for watching and please be sure to get in contact if you have follow-up questions.